How's it going everyone, this is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and I do believe that I owed you guys some GTX 1070 benchmarks paired with the new Ryzen 5 CPUs. I really wanted to see how these two CPUs, the 1500X and 1600, fared when paired with a faster GPU and lower settings, as well as quite a few people on my straw poll that I posted before Ryzen 5 launch. So, I used my GTX 1070, it's the Gigabyte Gaming G1 model, clocked at 2100 MHz core and 8800 MHz effective VRAM clock. Testing's been done much the same as in the Ryzen 5 review on the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard with 16 GB of Trident Z RAM. The CPU and RAM clocks are directly on the benchmarks and I also skipped the stock Ryzen CPUs this time. I did this since I'm really impressed by the thermals and power slash current draw on these chips and I think even the stock coolers and B350 boards will get you decent overclocks. And yeah, the 7500i5 is obviously at stock and we're comparing it to an overclocked 1500x, but that's life and lock CPUs for you. And off we go with Battlefield 1 and we're getting awesome performance on all these chips. None will have issues in powering a 120Hz plus monitor with these settings on the GTX 1070. Just like last time, the 7600K is on top but in the 1% and 0.1% department it loses by a rather large margin to the bigger brother the 7700K and the Ryzen 1600. On the frame time department, all CPUs, except the 7700K which is not shown here, have a hefty variance. Again, the i5s do lean more towards the hefty side than the Ryzen CPUs do, but I can't really say that BF1 felt bad on either of these systems. Mass Effect Andromeda on the other side really suffers on the i5-7500, so the 4GHz 1500X pulls ahead here by more than 10fps while also delivering nicer lows. We also get to see the 1600 kinda take off in this game making the most out of this overclock 1070 alongside the i7-7700K of course. But the frame times don't show a more tighter rise than this time, instead all CPUs exhibit again extensive frame time variance. Despite this, just like BF1 that's running on the same engine, I really can't say the game ran bad on these CPUs, with the exception of the i5-7500 that felt noticeably stuttery and I did catch it quite a few times well under the 75Hz refresh rate of my monitor. In Witcher 3 on high, the 1070 is really pushing some nice frame rates across all systems. The very low 0.1% frame time issue is back again on the i5s while it's lacking on all other CPUs. I was expecting more than a 10 FPS difference between the 1600 and the 1500X, considering that Witcher 3's engine is capable of scaling to a nice number of threads, but it does seem to be favoring the brute force approach which is very high clocks on the 76 and 7700K. Also strange is the fact that the 1500X had no spikes on the frame time graph as opposed to the 7500, but its bigger brother, the 1600, did have 4 dips at around 35-42 milliseconds. The 7600K dips were higher, accounting for the low 0.1% frame time. I want to mention that Witcher 3 constantly streams large amounts of assets from the drive to the RAM, so I wouldn't necessarily consider these Ryzen dips as CPU related. I do my best to avoid these by pre-benchmarking the area though on all systems. The 0.1% lows on the i5s however are a different thing, can be felt easily and the game really needs more than 4 threads for these to either go away or not be so noticeable. Ashes of the Singularity really hurts CPUs no matter how easy you go on the settings. This is also known for scaling with large amounts of threads, so naturally the 1600 even running at a lower clock than the 1500X has it and the 7500 beat by more than 12 FPS and it's more or less on par with the 7600K at 5 GHz. Frame times are like last time, they don't look particularly good or worse regardless of the system. Ideally for this game would be an 8 core 16 thread CPU that can also clock to 5 GHz, but that's not something that we'll see anytime soon from either party. Crisis 3 on the other hand really exploits every thread it can get its hands on. This game has certainly not received any patches in the last eon or so, but the engine is so smartly designed and built that it can really keep up with modern technology even 4 years after its release date. But since the GTX 1070 is quite a bit more powerful than the previous 1060 and RX 480, neither of these CPUs really offer minimal frame time variance. Well, the 7700K is markedly better for an 8 thread CPU, but still held back by a relatively low thread count. So while Ryzen also starts exhibiting large variance, the i5s are really struggling in some spots, which has to be expected in this game. 
Crisis only feels smooth with a GTX 1070 at these settings on either the 1600 overclocked or the 5 GHz 7700K, although the 7700K feels jerkier in the intense jungle fights. Well, at least Watch Dogs 2 doesn't behave as strangely as it did last time, so we get to see the 1500X pulling away from the i5-7500 and the 1600 offering performance in the general vicinity of the 5GHz 7600K. Frame times do look better on the Intel i5s here. I really hope to see a patch for this game that includes some Ryzen optimization, but the 1600 and 7600K didn't really feel bad in game. I addressed the hang issue with Intel in my previous video, as well as why it doesn't show up on my frame time graphs, so I won't be covering this again. Anyway, this game engine, although very thread aware, seems to really like high core clocks in the end. But nice to see a bit more normal behavior here than last time. And lastly, it's Hitman in DX12. Before you guys jump on pointing out the Nvidia card plus Ryzen CPU plus DX12 problems, I know about them. And there's something really strange in the way Hitman behaves on Ryzen. It's clearly enjoying more threads since the 7700K has a commanding lead but shows measly improvements between the 1500X and 1600. Also, this game can't get enough CPU since even the 7700K was nowhere near to 99% GPU utilization. Frame times, on the other hand, do show much less variance on the Ryzen CPUs, again backing up the fact that it likes high thread counts but ignores the 12 thread CPU in the room. Also, please don't pay attention to any frame time spikes on the graph as well as the 0.1% lows, this only happens when scenes switch during the benchmark. One thing I will do is check to see how in-game performance is like. The canned bench might be at fault here, that's just something I will have to explore down the road. Alright, so I guess you guys can draw your own conclusions from these graphs. Thing is that a lot of games still haven't received patches for Ryzen and some will never receive. Some games are simply so badly optimized that no matter if they receive a patch, they'll run poorly regardless of the system. <coughs> Mafia 3. I really don't want to get into a whole explanation about how games have been designed around Intel's architectures for the past years, but that's also a very valid point. I'd also like to point out that not even the fastest CPU in this test, the 5GHz 7700K, was tapping out the overclocked GTX 1070 running the specified game settings. So we are most definitely not GPU bound in the vast majority of time. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, write me your comments, questions and suggestions down below and also thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.